All hail the king and his disgusting eye. Chapter 6, Thunderfall. I see Soren has his game face on. They're really doing this, huh? They're really marching. Wow, look at this. Cozying up to each other. Again, thanks for not killing me, you know, for conning you and then betraying you, stealing a dragon and leaving you stranded in the desert. <laughs> it all worked out. It's okay. No tip. They tip in the Elfland too? This gets worse and worse. Yeah, it can get pretty thin up there. Looks like I gave you a tip. Guess we're even now. <laughs> Just leave. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Are you sure you don't want to stop and rest? <laughs> How are you tired? <laughs> Even though it's a little weird what's happening with Ezrin going back and forth, I feel like in a way we got the best of both worlds. Like I really enjoyed the arc with him at the kingdom, but also I really like him with Callum and Rayla, so I'm kind of happy he's going back. I think it was a good choice sending him back for those few episodes because I think that added to the Viren plot and the Claudia and Soren plot. And I think it's good he's going back because I think he's a good part of the trio. We need him. Respect that Viren leads from the front, at least. Yeah, I'm glad someone's noticing. More people are noticing, at least. You've adopted a little bug pal? Oh, yes, Soren. He is my little bug pal. I'll just ride back here with Claudia for a while. Ask him about the eye. Am I your little bug pal? We have a long journey ahead. He has a horse, too. Aphazana was an arch dragon, the great king of all the dragons. The most powerful creature in the world. Yet, somehow, you brought him down. We called him Thunder. AKA the Dragon King. Thunder killed our queen. The love of King Harrow's life, Sarai. Right. Yeah, so this is the one thing I think missing from the backstory. It's been implied that they kill the dragon out of revenge for this. But we don't know the actual story of them killing the dragon, I don't think. I'm wondering if there isn't something more to it. More to the story. I give up. Bait is a hiding genius. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> I love how Harrow is still a big part of the show. Care to join the next round of hide and seek? No cheating with magic. Uh huh. Perhaps next time. <laughs> I have discovered a powerful spell. We can create the ultimate weapon of vengeance. I'm sort of surprised by Harrow's reaction. I thought what he was going to say is something about how vengeance wouldn't bring Sarai back. But I guess he actually does want revenge, on some level at least. I guess this is part of his process of growing into that idea about cycles of violence and history being a narrative of power. In her final moments, I captured something that I hoped we could use later. It's empty. No. It contains her dying breath. Viren. Whoa. My daughter Claudia succeeded where I could not. She captured a unicorn and brought me its horn. Good job, Claudia. Tell me she wasn't your world. The dying breath. The unicorn's pure horn. There's one last component I need. The undying hatred of one who loved the victim. Your blood. Mmm. My boys, they're growing up. Perhaps it's wiser to stay focused on these blessings. This is more of the Harrow that I expected. And what about them? They were robbed of their mother's love. I do hate him. This explains a lot. We've always known that their decision to kill the Dragon King caused a series of events that put the humans in jeopardy, and we know that Harrow regrets that. But what adds a little something to it is that it was born from this moment of vengeance and hatred. It makes sense given their conversations way back in the beginning of the show about, you know, look where this has gotten us. A lot of it seems to have stemmed from him kind of giving in to some negative emotions. Someone like Harrow is going to think about that, be aware of that. It just seems like the awareness comes a little bit too late. 
The dying breath thing is insane. That he thought to do that while she was dying. Hey man, I'm Soren. I don't think I caught your name. Kasif. This guy Kasif has the worst case of resting bitch face I've ever seen in my entire life. This whole thing is sour. He just looks sour all the time. He's a sour boy, Kasif. Great guy, I'm sure. Ooh, let me guess. You're from that one kingdom. You know the you know the one I'm talking about? Uh uh the the Noodaludlia. Correct. Neolandia. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what, he said. Yeah. what I just said. Exactly. See, we're on the same page. Yeah. Just gotta noodle him up. Noodle him up. <laughs> we're going into Zadia. Oh yeah, it's his first time. Ezrin, lower your expectations, my dude. It is a complicated place. There are no stairs. But Ezrin will love it, because they have all these weird animals. Beefy? She's far away from the moon What's nexus. Wrong? She couldn't make it last time either. And your father? Is he talking to himself? What? No, no, no he's talking to his insect. Of course he's not talking to himself. That'd be crazy. Yeah. He's talking, talking to, to his, his insect. little bug pal. Exactly. See? Soren gets it. <laughs> he's always guarded this border jealously. But today, when we've come for him, he hides? No. If he's not protecting the border... He's protecting the prince. Look at these two. Just riding out into battle. He looks so cool. Leave. Wow. Today of all days, I will spare you. Today is a special day. A day of life. I love that they're actually able to talk. And it makes it a little sadder knowing what's going to come. Because, you know, I'm sure he's not like the best being in the world. He's not the kindest thing. But there's something good about that. There's something noble about that. But Harrow and Viren are out for blood. You never gave her that choice. It was a team effort. It's very, literally, the poison of hatred. Also, Unicorn Horn. Is this gonna be a statue that just exists? Damn, this is sad. I love this dragon. And the little tear. It's over. Not quite. Don't you see, if that egg hatches, all of us will be in terrible danger. From a baby dragon? It's horrific, Viren. There is no other way. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like once you start making these choices, it just gets easier and easier to keep going down that route. You've already sort of made your moral judgment on it. A lot of times the worst things people do, they don't start off at that level. We usually start out with very small decisions that ignore our conscience or our values that seem harmless on the surface, but they have a way of escalating. And I feel like the first time you do something, you're sort of setting yourself up. Even the most minor transgressions, like doing things that you think on some level are wrong, they make it easier to do that again the next time. And then by comparison, the next thing that's even worse isn't so bad anymore because you're already sort of on that path. Good habits work that way too. Once we start doing things we feel good about, even if they're difficult at first, they become easier over time because you sort of, you lay the tracks, you lay grooves for your own future future lifestyle. Harrow is a good example of that. I don't fault him for killing that ogre thing, the demon to get the, the warm heart or whatever. It's perfectly understandable to want to save your people from starvation. But that is what set him on this path of like saying yes to Viren, saying yes to dark magic, doing things he felt were on some level wrong. Here we are where he's sort of just like agreeing to everything. And I think it only is once he went fully down that road and saw that it was spiraling out of control that he kind of woke up and tried to backtrack. And at that point, it was a little bit too late for him. Do it. But like the one random saving grace is that Viren realized killing the egg is not ideal. There it is, still is there. It a statue? No. It sounds like you have a history with Evazendum. Oh, I do. He is the reason I am where I am today. Right, that's right. The mirror that Erebos came out of, or is still in, I guess, belonged to, to the dragon. The border is completely impassable. Impassable is just another kind of passable. 
Yes. I like how everyone loves Claudia. Esrin. Zim, Zim, I miss you so much. Bates side eye. Callum, Rayla. Feels good. I'm fine, Callum. I'm safe now. Oh no, Fifi. You promised me you'd be okay. That was so cruel if that's real. Okay, good. That would be so messed up for Ezrin, the animal lover. Oh, she's a phoenix. That's right. Just use a little bit of that phoenix down. They got to Zadia fast. I was expecting this to drag out through the rest of the season, but they're already here. Is he going to be able to hide his face after this? Thanks, Lava Moses. No, he's not hiding his face at all. They're already in. That's crazy. That was her spear, my mom's. And my stepdad put it into his heart. That was Zim's dad. Harold would be proud. Look at them. Playing together. That's the miracle. That's hope. They're the ones that are going to break the cycle. Awesome. I think that's a really nice thing. And it fits into the themes of the show really well. One of the biggest themes being the cycle of violence and how hate breeds more hate and violence breeds more violence. And Harrow's words to Callum and Ezrin that it's up to them to break free of history and to be who they want to be and not to relive the mistakes of the past. And Ezrin, Callum, and Zim are really great avatars for that because they've all experienced loss in that historic war between humanity and dragons. And so they're really good representations of that force from both sides. They exist simultaneously with people who are still perpetuating that cycle, who are still on that, that railroad track, namely Viren and his army that's marching into Zadia. So it's really cool how the episode cuts back and forth between the two groups, because those are the two opposing forces that are both in Zadia now, with different agendas and different lenses on history. Also, I'm happy in this episode that we finally got the, the backstory, the actual backstory on, on how the dragon death went down. That's been something I've been wondering about for a while. And I think having Harold throw the spear was the right choice. It does doesn't shy away from him being a perpetrator in this whole cycle, right? Like, he definitely played his role. It wasn't totally just top-down Viren manipulation on Harrow, right? Harrow was very much involved due to his own anger, his own pain. Another thing I'm excited about for this episode is I, I really didn't think they would get to Zadia this early, the marching armies. Also, I wasn't sure how long it would take Ezrin to get back to the group, but he's there now, so we're all ready to go. We have three episodes left in this season, and I feel like they're going to be huge. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'll see you guys for the next episode.